Greetings all and welcome back to my channel. I am Jolum. And it's Sunday and that means it's time for another album rankings episode. Before I begin, beginning next month, I will be adding new content on my other channel, Jolum's World. Finally, after struggling for a year. But I'll get to that in the weeks to come. This week on album rankings, I rank all 12 of Danzig's studio records from worst to best. The band Danzig is led by frontman Glenn Danzig, born Glenn Allen Anzalone, on June 23, 1965 in Lodi, New Jersey. He began his musical journey in 1977 when he founded the punk band The Misfits. He then later founded Sam Hain before rechristening the band of Danzig in 1987. As of this recording, Danzig had released 12 studio records. When you're done watching this video, feel free to check out past album rankings episodes as the playlist is in the description box. Let's begin with the worst out of all of Danzig records. Let's begin with the most recent Danzig release, 2020's Danzig Sings Elvis. This one was met with mixed reviews. One critic claims that Glenn didn't sound too bad, but the more he tried to sound like Elvis Presley himself, the more he misses the target, and at least... At least give him credit for covering songs from the late rock and roll king. But as far as um, songs go, none of them stood out. Number 11 is the covers album Skeletons. This record is full of covers from the 60s to throughout the 80s. He's covered tunes from Elvis to Black Sabbath to Aerosmith to the Everly Brothers and even ZZ Top. Devil's Angels, Rough Boy, and NIB were all standout songs. Next, in 10th place is Black Lady and Crown from 2017. This was filled with all new material since 2010's Death Red Sabaoth. The songs that stood out were Devil on Highway 9, Last Ride, The Witching Hour, and the title track, Black Lady and Crown. It reached number 97 on the Billboard 200. This album had multiple drummers perform different tracks, as Glenn Danzig performed drums on Songs like Eyes Ripping Fire, Last Ride, and Skulls and Daisies. While former drummer Joey Castillo performed on drum tracks like Devil on Highway 9 and Blackness Falls. Other drummers that provided their contributions are Sweden's Carl Rosfist, Dirk Verbjörn, who is currently Megadeth's drummer, and John Kelly, Johnny Kelly, formerly of Typo Negative. Next. In ninth place is the aforementioned Death Red Sabale from 2010. Taking the 10th spot, this one marks Danzig's highest charting in 16 years. Reaching number 35 on the Billboard 200, the songwriting of Glenn Danzig was on point. The arrangement was on point. The energy of this album all holds true to the elements of what made Danzig a force in metal to begin with. With dark, haunting, and seductive themes memorable hooks, and a solid, warm sound that balances the violent musical aggression with doom-heavy, melancholy feeling that still has the power to seduce the listeners to the dark side. The standout tracks for this one are On a Wicked Night, Black Candy, Death Red Moon, and Jujubon. Next. At number 8 is 2004 Circle of Snakes. Take as this record was the first by the band themselves since their debut that doesn't have a number incorporating into the title. It has only reached the Swedish charts at number 18. This album marked the return of Glenn to his immediate post-Misfits roots. And the record was stripped down from a lot of the industrial metal he had attempted to do. And incorporated in albums like Black Acid Devil and I Luciferi. The only song on this record that stood out was the closer, Black Angel, White Angel. Taking the seventh spot is I Luciferi from 2002. This record reached the Swedish charts at number 33. The song Angel Blake is named after a witch in the film The Blood of Satan's Claw. Other songs in this one that stood out were Kiss the Skull and Wicked Pussycat. The rest of the record I did not care for. At number six is Satan's Child from 1999. They were still incorporating that industrial metal sound that partially began on Danzig 4 and continued on Black Ass the Devil and on through I Luciferi. I felt that 
this record was a little stronger than the next two ones in the recent prior to this one being released combined. Five Finger Crawl and 13 are the only songs that stood out from this record. Glenn Danzig actually wrote the song 13 originally for Johnny Cash for Cash's 81st album American Recordings back in 1994. Taking the fifth spot is Black Ass the Devil from 1996. This marked a change in musical and creative direction for Glenn Danzig as he got all new players after the classic lineup was no more. Glenn actually wrote another song for Johnny Cash, originally called Come to Silver, but was never recorded after Glenn and producer Rick Rubin had a bad falling out. So Come to Silver ended up on this record. Sacrifice and Serpentia were standout tracks for this album. They also did a cover of Black Sabbath's Hand of Doom, which I recommend you give a listen to. Next, taking the fourth spot is Danzig 2 Lucy Fuge from 1990. This one was Danzig's most underrated album from the classic lineup era, which featured Glenn, guitarist John Christ, bassist Erie Vaughn, and drummer Chuck Biscuits. Check out my previous album rankings video where I ranked the most underrated albums of 1990. I think I listed that at number 13, if I'm not mistaken. But Lucy Fuge reached number 45 on the Billboard 200 and had a lot of killer cuts like Killer Wolf, Her Black Wings, Devil's Plaything, and Blood and Tears, to name a few. Next. Taking the third spot is Danzig 4 from 1994. The album reached number 29 on the Billboard 200, and this marked the beginning of the end for the classic Danzig lineup, as Chuck Biscuits was the first to go after the filming of the video Until You Call in the Dark, which got banned by MTV due to standards and practices. Then after the tour of this record, Erie Vaughn and John Christ foul suit. The standout tracks for this record are I Don't Mind the Pain, Going Down to Die, Until You Call in the Dark, and Can't Speak. Next. We're down to the final two and taking the runner-up spot is Danzig's self-titled debut from 1988. It still remains the band's best-selling album going gold in the U.S. The single Mother would become a hit about five, six years later, reaching number 43 on the Billboard Hot 100 and 17 on the mainstream rock charts, respectively. The other standout tracks include She Rides, Twist of Cain, Am I Demon, and Possession. Not to mention their cool cover of Albert King's The Hunter. And now, arguably the best album, in my opinion, arguably, happens to be Danzig 3, How Did Gods Kill? It soared to number 24 on the Billboard 200, which was the highest the band ever got on that chart. Glenn and company were firing on all cylinders with this classic beast of a record, which features songs like Heart of the Devil, do You Wear the Mark, Sistina's, Bodies, the title track, and of course, my all-time favorite Danzig song, Dirty Black Summer. This album, by far, is Danzig at his best. Here is a quick recap of Danzig's discography from worst to best. While I hadn't listened to every song of every Danzig record, Glenn actually covering Elvis was by far the worst. Skeletons was nothing more than a covers record. A decent enough gem for any collector out there. Black Lady and Crown isn't as good as Death Red Sabaoth. Circle of Snakes saw dancing stripped down from previous albums like I Luciferi, Satan's Child, and Black as a Devil. Lucy Fuge, as I stated, was still a, an underrated classic from the classic lineup. Danzig 4 saw the beginning of the end of the classic Danzig lineup and a fallout out between Glenn and Rick Rubin. Their debut remains their biggest seller an only gold record, and like it or not, How Did God's Kill is their best album, bar none. This has been Album Rankings for this Sunday. No, 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 no.